Hello and welcome to the Hot Seat with Violet Gondam, the program that puts the newsmakers in the spotlight to deal with the tough issues relating to Zimbabwe. So who's in the hot seat this week? Welcome on the Hot Seat program. My name is Violet Gonda and my guest today is a Zimbabwean author, academic and publisher, Dr. Ibo Mandaza, who will give us his analysis on the latest succession battles in ZANU-PF and the recent coalitions in the opposition. Welcome on the program, uh, Dr. Mandaza. Thank you. Now, first of all, can you give us your thoughts on... Uh, what is uh, is it that is at the center of these power fights within Zalo PF? Well, it has to do essentially with the succession issue, as you pointed out in your introduction. The succession battles are becoming uglier and uglier every day. And uh, the indication of that, we may even descend into violence. And there are reports of attempted coup, in fact. Who are the main players? Because before we, we heard that, you know, there are two main factions, the G40 led by Sebe Kasukuere, um, Professor Jonathan Moyo, and then on the other side, um, Emerson Manangagwa. Is this still the case? Yes, I think the proverbial Lacoste versus the G40. But as uh, some of us have said before, the G40 is essentially Mugabe himself. And therefore, the onslaught against uh, Kasukuere is actually an assault on Mugabe himself. And I think he has realized that. So what evidence is there that there could be a possible coup and by who? The allegations are that among the demonstrators, particularly in Mashon Central in Bindura, were identified some military personnel in civilian clothing uh, and evidence that they had been bused from Harare to Bindura to effect the demonstration. And uh, those that identified them, may possibly the intelligence for that matter, have warned the head of state that if unless he acts quickly, uh, a coup is imminent. This is the report some of us have received today. So who really is calling the shots here? Some people believe that Kasugwere is now finished since he has had 10 zonal PF provinces pass a vote of no confidence. I think clearly given the onslaught that was waged by the first family, to begin with the interview that uh, Jonathan Moyo gave in the Standard about more than a month ago, followed by the interview, the birthday interview on that Friday, the birthday interview that Mugabe gave and was then broadcast the following week. But on that very day, that Friday, uh, Grace had held a rally on the same day. And the import of those three was, was to suggest that Emerson Mnangagwa was done. Uh, to quote Jonathan Moyo, that those who think Emerson Mnangagwa would succeed Mugabe will be seriously disappointed. So, clearly, there was resonance between what Jonathan Moyo said and what Mugabe and his wife said a week or two later. And so, for many observers, it appeared that the die was cast. Emerson Mangagwa would not succeed Mugabe. But if, if the if reports of this fight back by Emerson are true, then it appears that we have a fight on. Uh, over the weekend, uh, the Lacoste uh, people were boasting that they were 80% done with G40. And uh, Evidence has also emerged of a well-coordinated offensive on the part of Lacoste, with uh, key persons around Emerson and Mangawa reported to be in charge of the processes of no confidence and demonstrations in the various provinces. And as I said earlier on, it appears that what many of us expected, that if you are going to try and, and undress a guy like Kasukwere, who for any for, for all we know, there's nothing that the Kasukwere has done without the authority or the approval of the president. It was clear that to attack Kasukwere, you were actually attacking Mugabe himself. And it appears that now, over the last 24 hours, that reality has dawned on the powers that be. So, as they say, probably watch this space the next few days. We have a fight on. So, does this now mean that since the 10 provinces have said they want Kasukwere out and uh, since Mugabe is still supporting Kasukwere, does this mean that they also want the president out? That they have lost if, confidence in the president? If so, fact, yes. yes. But even though I don't think they would have realized that. But some of us who know the nature of the politics in zanu PF can conclude that is the case. And that, uh, therefore, they may have provoked a, a hornet's nest, so to speak. Because as we expect Mugabe to react 
and he's already reacted from what I've heard, that he's likely now to put in, in process a countrywide new provincial elections and under his own leadership or guidance, but using the Kazikwere and Chombo to do the job. What we're seeing basically is that you will see in the next few weeks a fight back uh, led by the old man himself as the roll back, the kind of offensive, which appeared on, on the face of it to be an attack on Kasukwere. But I think this time, Lacoste may have gone too far, and Mugabe has realized that the attack is actually on him, uh, against him. That's clear. And that's clear from two responses. Uh, the response by uh, Mpoko, the vice president Mpoko, and in particular the response by Jonathan Moyo, in which he is saying very categorically that those who are attacking Kasukwere have not stated in any meaningful way what precisely is done wrong. And he concludes that the claim that Kasukwere has been trying to stop with the president is hogwash. No, it's clear that whether, whether that allegation worked against, against uh, Joyce Mujuru and many others, I don't think that it can work against Kasukwere. As I said earlier on, it is, it is unlikely, highly unlikely, that Kasukwere would have done anything uh, including the issue of the so-called parallel structures without Mugabe's permission, without Mugabe's consent. So if that's the case, then doesn't this contradict your earlier uh, comment that um, we are likely to see a coup then if, 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 if the president is clearly supporting Kasukwere? I said that, that those who have been fighting uh, Kasukwere, right, were disguising the reporter that this was a disguised coup, and a coup right. is not against Kasukwere. A coup is against Mugabe. A disguised coup as evidence, according to the reports, by presence of soldiers who had been bust in civilian clothing from Harare to Bindura, which in particular provoked the attention of the security agencies who have warned Mugabe that this is more than just an attack on Kasukwere. This is a coup in the making. Oh, so that's why the president has now had to step in to stop uh, what you say is uh, a plot by uh, Team Lacoste to get rid of Kasugwiri and others. Well, it begins on Sunday, doesn't it? Uh, Sunday we received the report, or Saturday, that Mugabe had directed a high-powered delegation to go out to Bindura to investigate to investigate the allegations that Kasugwiri was trying to topple the president. And that was almost put in the cat among the pigeons. Those, uh, Martin Dina and his colleagues, did everything possible and eventually succeeded in having the meeting postponed. It was clear that this was the beginning of the fight back by Mugabe. It was not about Mugabe giving in to Kasukwere being ousted. It was in fact to say, well, I, it was called the bluff of Lacoste, prove that Kasukwere has done wrong. And if you can't prove that in the, in, in the case of much, much Central, there's, then, then there's no basis at all for the countrywide protests and, 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 and votes of no confidence. You know, as I said earlier on, it appears that the Lacoste had overreached themselves. It appears that, that it, has backfired. it has backfired, and the fight back has begun by Mugabe, by the G40. Mm-hmm. And Mugabe. Yes. But Dr. Madaza, is, is this uh, uh, about political interest or it's, it's, about, uh, it's, it's also about economic interest? Because we now hear this issue of uh, the all exposing uh, each other on the issue of the land, you know, the urban and land and um, the land barons within uh, zona PF structures. What can you say about this? Yeah, there's been a very uh, interwoven uh, relationship between the state and the kind of primitive accumulation around the state. And land barons are part of that, no doubt about that. And clearly, the as I said earlier on, it's, it's really, uh, ultimately, it's all about how Mugabe can retain power. It is really about succession. The problem is centered around Mugabe himself. He has left it too late. It is, it is clear that he has not really handled the succession issue uh, uh, properly, and it's coming back to haunt him. He might win the battle, but it's unlikely that he'll win the war. In my view, it's, a, it's the last phase of the, the secular state, as I've written before. But have you ever seen anything like this in the history of Zona PF or, 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 you know, in, in the country where ministers, you know, fight openly or are openly fighting? Yes, I accept that now it's, it's the worst possible dimension of it. It's, it is something that, that is given to Zona PF as a movement. It's not a political party in the, in the conventional sense. It is organizationally vacuous. It's ideologically and politically vacuous. And it's a, it's a loose uh, movement held together by the state with which it is conflated, 
held together by the big leader. And clearly, with the departure of the big leader, that's the end of Zanu PF. No doubt about that. Even if the state uh, uh, lives on in some form, but clearly we are facing the last stages of Mugabe's, the Mugabe's regime. So is this good news for the opposition, especially with elections around the corner? Is this the end of well, Zanu PF? Uh, well, uh, it doesn't mean that it, the, uh, the opposition can walk in into power. But the future of Zimbabwe depends very much on what happens within Zanu PF itself, uh, really. Sadly, the opposition look very marginal. By the opposition, I mean the opposition movements such as MDC and others. Even though the opposition as a whole, the country is opposed to Mugabe. The majority of Zimbabweans are opposed to Mugabe. But they lack, there is lacking a, an organizational framework on the part of the opposition. And they've reduced their campaign to merely replacing Mugabe. There is no attempt to tackle the fundamental issues of a pathological state that Zimbabwe is at the moment. The need for the reform of the state, first and foremost. The failure to realize that the failure by Zanu PF to effect electoral reforms is a reflection of a b- bigger problem, which is the failure to reform the state itself. As Jonathan Moy put it some months ago, you, are, you, you can't expect us to reform ourselves out of power. That is the essence of the thing. And therefore, the opposition have not, have not had the courage and conviction to tackle, first and foremost, the need, need for reform. And that's why, the, hence the uh, schizophrenic approach uh, to elections. On the one hand, they say, well, we won't go into elections until there's reform. And then the claim that, oh, we, have, we know what Zanu PF is up to. This time around, we can, we can prevent them from, from rigging the election. It's all nonsense, if you ask me. The real truth is that they are yeah. flat-footed. They don't know how to move forward, and they have no consequences. They go for election, the same result as we had in 2013, a rigged outcome. It's not rigged already. But many are excited about the BVR, which means that there will be a new voters rule without ghost voters. Surely this is good news in terms of prospects for a free and fair election. In time for the elections next year, a year, a year away? Absolutely impossible. And what does the BVR, uh, how does the BVR uh, resolve the issue of the, of the voters vote in 12 months? It's impossible. It's impossible. It's a joke, actually. A, a dirty joke, that matter. Basically, you're saying the Zana PF house is on fire, but still, that does not necessarily mean that um, come next year when we have elections, that um, you know new players will come in, especially from the opposition. Uh, so then... What what is the way forward? What do you see happening? The country, the country is on fire. The current strategy by the opposition is not about resolving the problem at all. The least we require right now is elections. Okay, there should be no elections until we tackle the crucial political and economic that confront us, which is the reform of the state, restoration of the national institutions, which have been corrupted by Mugabe's regime, and making certain that we have generational change in our politics. Yeah. But can elections be postponed? Of course they can be postponed. In 2013, the Maputo summit in June 2013, before the elections, right? Maputo summit was all about having the elections postponed, the SADC summit. I went there, I was there, I was there at the summit, and Mugabe pretended to agree to a postponement of the election. If you recall, the postponement was based on the need to reform at least electoral uh, laws, okay? And after the summit, the Morgan Sangrai, and IBT, more uh, Welshmen and women, all of them were called to a separate meeting by the heads of state of study in the absence of Mugabe, that same evening, that evening. And they were told, I was sitting there outside the room with uh, Mark Maharaj, they were told if you go into elections next month, you are going to lose. The elections are done. And we came back on a Sunday, Monday, with a policy dialogue at started to discuss the, 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 the summit. And lo and behold, while we were discussing it, the, 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 the court papers arrived. Uh, uh, calling the MDC to court to show a reason why the election should be postponed. Mugabe had done a vote fast uh, against the decision of the summit, and Mugabe went on TV and, 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 and threatened to leave Sadek. So who's Sadek? We can leave Sadek anyway. And so, under some pretext of a court application by Jerez Mawarari, Mawari, which others claim it was really actually a Dano PF ploy, the elections were held. And three, four days before the elections, Morgan Sangra was, was, was lamenting that yet evidence that the election already rigged. You know? They all warned. They have been warned again now, but blindly almost, although they cannot make any excuses now. They are going into elections again. What has happened to, to your calls for a transitional authority? What have what the political parties said about this? Well, they have, they have been most opposed to the opposition parties, and, and for good reason. They're not interested in reforms. They want to get it back into power, back into office, back into salaries and, and state cars. 
That's all they want. So they've rejected. So, they, so they've rejected the NTA. Of course, they've they've been more 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 opposed to the NTA than than UPF itself. The NUPF elements here and there have been more more receptive to the idea of NTA. It's also because they know that their 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 party is mortally mortally wounded, and the uh, NTA might save them, might save them. Certainly, those who lose in this battle will find refuge in an NTA. Because if the side that loses in this battle, we'll, we have to run for dear life, clearly. And the NTA was proposed by some of us as a, as a kind of a peacekeeping process, a stabilizing process. Not the stabilization that people like Stephen Chan and Shatter Mouse have been talking about. Because there can be no stabilization under Emerson Mnangagwa. Emerson Mnangagwa is part of the architecture of, the, of this pathological state. And to expect that the state will be better... Under a person, whether it's Emerson Nangaga or whoever else in the, in the, in the current ZANU PF uh, leadership, that you can expect stability in continuity is sheer madness on my part. And I'm sorry to say that. And I really am I'm, I'm, I'm shattered by the views of people like uh, Stephen Chan, which views they express on the sidelines of uh, SAPES uh, policy dialogue. He, he had no guts to say that in the, in the policy dialogue, but he went to say this to reporters yeah, behind us. Is it true that the diplomatic community also uh, feels that um, they're supporting uh, uh, the progressive forces within ZANU PF and they see Emerson Mnangagwa as a, 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 as a better candidate? No, they are stupid. They are stupid. It's, self, it's self-serving nonsense. They are, they are, the reality is that they, are, they have made the, the wrong judgments. Those of, those, I'm talking about those who have made those calculations. They have made the wrong judgments, clearly. And now they don't know what to do. Because, first of all, it's unlikely that Emerson Mnangagwa will take over anyway. And, and, and secondly, the expectation through the Lima process that the Zimbabwe government, the Zimbabwe state can reform has become a nightmare because there's no reform in, in the process. So the EU, the British government, all of them, those who have been making loud noises about Emerson Nangagwa's being the reformer, have egg on their face, clearly. But we who live in Zimbabwe know that there can be no a better Zimbabwe, possibly a worse Zimbabwe, if the succession takes the route that these merchants of stability are proposing. It would be a, a worse but- nightmare, I can tell you that. There's some who believe that if the opposition can mobilize uh, more people from the rural areas, then it has a chance. Because we keep hearing that the opposition needs to devise an electoral strategy uh, specifically for the rural areas. So since Zanu PM said to control the rural areas, which has um, 65 to 70 percent of the population in Zimbabwe, do you agree with this? What, what is, what, what is the, the profile of the voters? Let's look at the recent by-elections. Mwenezi, what did you see there? 18,000 out of 26,000, right? The Zimbabwean mm-hmm. state... The state structures extend right down to the village. The village heads are, are civil servants. The chiefs are civil servants. The chiefs have become a major way, a major instrument in the regimentation, not mobilization, regimentation of the voter. So that takes care of the rural areas, right? Let's come to the, to, to, to the urban areas. You saw the Rao report. Only 14% of the youth have, been, have registered as voters. And what do you have? I mean, you're talking about the last two elections that turned out to 40, 40, 49%. Not to mention the 3.8 million, uh, 4.8 million Zimbabweans outside the country. We have a fractured electorate, a manipulated, a, a manipulated and regimented electorate. We have a broken country, Violet. It is not a country in which you can have free and fair elections, let, any, let alone meaningful elections of any sort. But what about and I repeat, the we need, we of, need to you know, go back to the drawing board and realize that, that our country is in a mess and do things but, that are important first before we talk about the elections. But what and, about and, the and, work and, being done by the, by the social media platforms, the hashtag movement, you know, like this flag, Tajamuka and others? Isn't that a step in the right direction, at least, so that we have now these yeah, youngsters but those are, those who are, are more coming up? Those are more expressions or symptoms of the frustration in the body politic. They don't amount to any substantive definition of an alternative Zimbabwe at all. These are laments, you know. So are they not having an impact on the ground in the country? They will have. They will have, they will have had an impact. But they're not, they're not being sustainable, sustainable, given the nature of the Tukukut state. So what is the way That's forward? The, will Zimbabwe ever recover from this uh, zombie we need a national, we need a national. We need a national dialogue, right, which takes stock of the situation we're in, which recognizes the fact that we need reform before elections, political reform, which means constitutionalism, aligning the laws of the constitution. It means re- restoration of the national institutions and, and, and economic reform over and above 
the kind of payment or, or, or of arrears of our loans. Some that goes far beyond that to restore the productive capacity of our country. We are a torn country. We are in a crisis. And to have elections which simply ensure that we have continuity of the same or a succession process in which you are asking naively and speculatively, expecting that the, the, the one who uh, succeeds in Mugabe in the current structure will make things better. It's nonsense, in my view. What can the civil society do? Um, or even what are you trying to do to uh, push these uh, political players to the negotiating table to at least um, start these discussions? Since you say, especially the opposition has rejected a uh, call for national dialogue uh, via an NTA. Yeah, well, we have we have a, we're having a big conference at the end of June, uh, Zimbabwean Transition Reform and Reconstruction, in which we we are emphasizing that the reform is a precedent, a uh, condition precedent for re- reconstruction in Zimbabwe, and we are trying to mobilize not only Zimbabweans but uh, at home, but also in the diaspora, and in doing so, trying to mobilize the region and the global community into an awareness of the Zimbabwean crisis, and through it to look beyond Mugabe and begin planning for a better Zimbabwe tomorrow. But how will you convince ZANU-PF and indeed the opposition to participate in something like this? We are talking to them. They are, they are, they are participating. We have all the parties participating. We have ZANU-PF participating. We have the state participating. And we have the conference that we opened by the Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Mdenda, to highlight the importance of, of uh, Parliament, the legislature, to highlight that reform will also have to include the necessity of instituting separation of powers in which the, the, the legislature becomes an important factor along the judiciary in containing and controlling the excess of, of the executive. One of the pathologies of the Zimbabwean state is the extent to which the executive is all supreme over the legislature and over the, over the, the judiciary in the form of, of Mugabe. Yeah, but um, I, I'm sorry to sound pessimistic, but um, I remember Professor Jonathan Moyo uh, saying that uh, Zanu PF will never uh, participate in uh, negotiations uh, that will remove it from power. So I'm a bit skeptical in terms of um, uh, what will be the end game, you know, um, the, even though well, it's a noble that, cause. That's, that's, that, that, that's political posturing. When the die is cast, People will negotiate. We have learned from political economy, no class ever commits suicide. It is the objective of every class to reproduce itself. And when under, under threat, they, wa- they will want to find a solution in which they can survive and see tomorrow. That's, mm-hmm. That is the formula of politics, basically. And I dare say, negotiations have begun already. For some of us, we have been involved in the process. We have been talking around. People, Zimbabwe understand. If the powers that be, uh, even the Zimbabwean state, understand that there is need for it tomorrow. There is an acute understanding of the crisis that, that confronts them, but they lack mm-hmm. the means with which to rectify the problem, the crisis. And it is the role of us, uh, civil society, academia, intelligentsia, to assist towards the resolution of the problem. The Zimbabwean right. state and- is incapable of reform. We need a mechanism through which we can assist them Together with the opposition to reform, a national dialogue is not what we're working at towards. A national dialogue. And I repeat, elections are not the solution. You, you saw the NDCT signed the MOUs with um, Joyce Mujuru and, and Washman Mube recently. What do you make of, these, um, of this uh, opposition coalition? And um, what is the governance plan? Well, I think basically, on the one hand, it's a, it's a very positive move that you can have a consensus building among the opposition forces and through them, the opposition uh, parties, uh, to have a broader national consensus, a national dialogue. If that dialogue can also uh, lead uh, all of us into an understanding of the Zimbabwean problem and the importance of reform before elections. So, yes, it's a positive in that regard. But it must go beyond purely a coalition. We need a coalition around the need for reform and a clear definition of an alternative Zimbabwe. If it's, in a, if it's in a, a coalition merely to win elections to get Mugabe out, as I've said somewhere, somewhere before, Mugabe is not the issue here. Mugabe is unlikely to be there in the, in the next election, if there are elections, which I don't think there will be next year. So it's really about a, a coalition which will produce a presidential candidate around a reform agenda. I repeat, around a reform agenda. Not just how, who gets what, who becomes president, who becomes vice president. And I think so far... The indication that the coalition is all about that and no more. Thank you very much, Dr. Ibo Mandaza. Thanks, Violet.